God bless everybody this evening. God bless you. Amen. 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 Let's see if this goes on. There we go. All right. So, let me just do a little recap. Let's just pray. Can we just bow our heads and pray? <laughs> Father, we just praise your holy name. We glorify you, Father God. And we thank you for allowing us to be in your house today, Father God. And Father, I ask you, Father God, to bless those that are here, Lord God, that they might receive, Father God, what you are about to say, Father God. That they might, Father God, write in their hearts and in their mind, Father God. That they might hold it close to them, Father God, not that the enemy steal it away from them, Father, but they might record it in times of need. That they might use it, Father God, for your kingdom, for your glory, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now we started this month with, uh, why did that start with? I started with, you know, talking about witches. us, you know, you guys being witches, not me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys being witches. And how the enemy gets you to, to what the Bible says about witchcraft and sorcery. And it's a very, let me tell you something, it's a very <coughs> deep topic when we talk about this. Because there's a lot of material to try to cover in, in a short time. But we're going to try our very best to do what we can with the time we have. So we talked about what the Bible says about witches and how many of you are practicing witches. And I pray that you're not since you learned about it. And I pray that you've been taking everything captured that you speak so that you do not put yourself in that spot of witchcraft or sorcery. Amen? Amen. Then the following week, we talked about how, what is a witch and how society has changed it throughout time. And we showed a couple of examples, a couple of pictures, right? And we discussed it. That they are real, they do cast spells, they do meat, they do a lot of things, right? They fast, they pray, they pray against you. Right? They park outside of churches and curse them. And all that good stuff, right? Very interesting stuff, right? But you see, the enemy, how many of you, how many of you know that the Bible said that the Bible gives you a little insight how the enemy is. And they give you an insight how he is in Genesis. What did it say in Genesis about it? It said that the serpent was very what? Crafty. crafty, subtle, among all the animals. So he's not naive, he's crafty, right? So, if you're aware of how you speak and what the Bible says about witchcraft, and you get that under your belt, right? And you start to be aware of you know, what to say and what not to say, and now you start to identify those who are saying it, right? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you, and the Holy Spirit lets you know when someone is a practicing witch, right? Or war, like all, all that good stuff. How does the enemy get to you? How does he still get you to practice what he wants? Through deception. Through deception, correct. Because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit in you. That's why. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you? That's, that's very good. Yeah. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you. It's very easy. Remember? He makes it very tempting. He makes it very tempting. From the, from the nine-year-old. Amen. Amen. It's true. He makes it very tempting. He'll use people very close to you that you don't suspect. You use very people close to you that you want to... All those are very good. And they're true. He use all these things. He's crafty. He doesn't sleep. Mm. We need to sleep. He doesn't. Mm. And neither does his agents. They're awake all the time. Don't get tired. Trust me. They are relentless. Amen. Do you ever feel that pressure that you like, it just doesn't let up? Mm -hmm. But do you know how many 7, 26? God gives you a way to give you a little rest. It says, Neither shall thou bring any what, abomination into thy house, lest thou be cursed, thing like it. But thou shalt already detest it. Thou shalt already I've heard it. It is a cursed thing. So why is he saying? If it's of the devil, if you believe in the devil, not in the Holy 
Holy Spirit or in Jesus Christ, things gonna happen to you. The devil gonna tempt you. And the devil really tempt those are who are challenged to him. Okay, the and devil I believe, tempt I believe that if he doesn't have Jesus Christ in you or have the Holy Spirit in you, he's gonna he's gonna always try to tempt you. That's his nature. His nature is to tempt. Right? His nature is to tempt. So let's let, let's let's get that out of the way. Right? Let's just get that out of the way. Because you tell me the devil is a devil, it's no big deal. I know he's a devil. So, he's the devil. Okay. But what is the verse telling you? How does... If he can't touch you, right? Because you are covered with the Holy Spirit. You are sealed. He can't touch you. Yes. Uh, you're asking us to, to answer. Uh, I, I want you to answer. What is the verse saying? Okay. Um, well, abomination is uh, something that is offensive and something to to refuse, to discard, mm -hmm. to keep away. Uh, a thing, you know, adversarial to you. And it's actually saying, don't bring it into your house, lest you be cursed like it. Right. And, uh, and for you to <laughs> utterly detest it. And, and okay, and thou shalt uh, uh, all right, and to abort it, which means something that's vile, something that you want to keep away from you. Right. Um, but it is a cursing thing, a curse thing. Right. So not to bring it to the house. That's how you can bring it into your life. You can bring it unto yourself by bringing it into your house. Right. Very good. By bringing it into your house, you become a cursed thing. So how many of you, if I was to ask, how many of you have a cursed thing in your house? Some of you will raise your hand. Some of you are brave enough to raise your hand. Some of you won't, right? Automatically, you read this verse and you start thinking, what does this have to do with witchcraft? What does this have to do with... It has a lot to do with it. I believe anything to do with sin is witchcraft. And if you entertain it, you, you got you to gotta understand that it's gonna, it's, the devil gonna attack you at all times. I believe if you have Jesus Christ in you at all times, and you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's nothing, nothing in this world for you can come in your house or try to body because he knows that you are safe from. All right. We'll he knows that you have a shield around you. So okay. You body. So if you entertain sin, you entertain that, that that's why you say that. If you entertain sin, bring it in your house or walk with sin, is gonna is for forever. Witchcraft and sin come hand in hand. Right. So he's gonna body it. So my, my thing is is that you know at all times you have to give God a praise and protect you wherever you go. So so the Holy Spirit Spirit can stay with you. That's that's the body. Amen. We should always be asking God to protect yes. us. That's why we should pray, you know. Thank you for watching my going and my coming. Right? Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is we don't do that. Yeah. Let's be very honest. We don't even think about it. We don't think about this verse at all, actually. So the enemy is crafty because he'll get you pre, he'll get you occupied with so many things, and you don't realize what you are actually bringing in your house. If I was just, you know, there's some people that actually don't want me in their house. But you know, excuse me, the bottom line of your house is your body. Actually, is 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 this here? Yes. That's your house. I understand it's that. Not, it's not really mean your house house, mm -hmm. but it really mean this here. This here. This is not talking about this here. This is talking about where you dwell. Yes. Yes, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And yes, the eyes are the window into our soul. But where you lie your head is the temple of the Lord. Whether we want to realize that or not, it's the temple of the Lord. Your house cannot be a safe haven for devils and not think that you're going to be okay. Now you can take that however you want, but that's what the verse is saying. Your house cannot be a, a safe haven for every demonic thing and you think it's not gonna touch. It doesn't work like that. Yep. If this is clean, where I sleep has to be clean. Amen. Where I rest my head has to be clean. It, it, does that make sense? Yes. 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 Because if not, it's gonna be a, a war. So the enemy knows it, so he's crafty, so he's going to try to get you to do certain things without you knowing.
But my job is to bring it up to the forefront so you can know how to battle. So you can sleep good through the night. Amen. Yep. How many of you have a trouble sleeping through the night? A lot of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I got a question. When you sleep, when you sleep, yeah. is, is the devil going to attack you more or God's going to be in you or, or you got to pray before you sleep and after you sleep? It all depends so on you. Said, it all, it all, all depends on you. you. Really sleep. It all depends on you. Okay. I, I, just, <laughs> I sleep like a baby. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to know if, if, well, now I'm trying to practice. Uh -huh. Now I'm trying to make sure I pray before I go to bed right. and after. Mm -hmm. and, and, and still want to know if, if you're not praying, if the devil can attack you between the... If you're not praying? With, if you're sleeping, then. If it can really attack you. But that's my question. I mean, I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, the devil, let me put it like this. Let me put it like this so we, so we can move on because we got a lot of material. Right. The devil doesn't mean to care jack the squad about you if you're awake or you're asleep. He'll attack you when you're awake, he'll attack you when you're sleeping. He doesn't care. Now, we could, you could pray and the hand of God be upon and he'll, he'll give you a good night's sleep. What? But it doesn't stop the enemy. Remember, we wrestle against. Not flesh and blood. Like I just don't want to give him blood, praise. I mean, I, I don't want to give him a praise. I just want to verify because... I'm not trying to give him praise either, yeah. but I acknowledge why he yeah. does. Right. And I'm not, oh, I'm not turning a blind eye to it. That's when, when I pray at night, I bleed the blood over me, and I go back to it. It doesn't stop him from still attacking my dreams. Because subconsciously, he, he's the prince of the air. He will work with things in. So... That's why you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why many times in your dreams, Jesus shows up. Because he battles. So he does this. Spells in the Bible are always described negatively. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 11. Numbers those that cast spells with those who commit other acts. Decessible to the Lord. So it says child sacrifice. I hope you don't do that. Witchcraft, sorcery, divination, necromancy, consulting with the dead. Micah 5.12 says that God will destroy witchcraft and those who cast spells. Revelation 18 describes spells as part of the deception that will be used by the Antichrist. His great city of Babylon. Towards the end time, deception would be so great that even the elect would be deceived if God did not protect us. Matthew 24, 24, God will already destroy Satan, the Antichrist, and all who follow them. Revelation chapter 19 and 20. Amen? Amen. So God, again, is speaking very clear what he does not like. Right? He says there will be a great deception. So great that even the elect will be deceived if God, not no one knows, if God does not intervene and protect so it's not like a little, I fool you, it's, I got you. Amen? Amen. And only God could do this. So, let's talk about this. Rid your home of witchcraft and satanic objects. Some of these ties that cause curses can be objects that were used in occult or occult practices. Whether we purchase these ourselves or someone else and give give or hand down to us. Have you ever gotten something handed down to you? Have you ever gotten something that someone bought for you? Yes. These are where things that could be cursed. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm just going to say it for you. You can read it up there. So the devil is crafty. He, the Bible says that he is subtle. He, he doesn't come all that way. He's subtle, little by little. How does he get you to practice witchcraft and sorcery and all these things that God hates? He makes it attractive. He makes it alluring. He makes your eyes open up very wide because your eyes open up doesn't open up wide for the Bible, but it'll open up wide for a movie. It'll open up wide for what you want to see. Now you can say, well, I'm not practicing it. Are you watching it? Is your flesh liking it? Are you glued to the channel? Who's the channel? Your TV. Because whatever you put in, it's going to channel back, right? Whatever you click. 
Why were you looking at it? Do you find that hard to believe or is it bothering you somewhere? If it's bothering you, it's called the Holy Spirit. Yes? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones? Okay. I, I personally don't like it, but Happy has got loads of things in this house with it. Um, It's not, listen. Is it bad? Is it bad? Yes. <laughs> of course. Is it glorifying God? No, of course not. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Is it promoting violence and sex? No the Game of Thrones? I don't know. I don't now watch the Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if it's if if, if it has nothing to do with the Bible, then not. what is it doing to you? If the darkness in your eyes is so big, then how big is that darkness in you? If what you're watching is dark. See, this is going to bother you because this is going to challenge you to change your life. I just want to give you an example. Yes. I had gone on vacation one time and I bought a souvenir from, from where I went on vacation. And I brought it back home. And I remember I had it. I thought it was beautiful. I put it somewhere. Unbeknownst to me, it it was like a, star, a sun and a, and a star or something like that. And it that, you know, the Mexicans tend to worship the gods of the sun and, and things like that. And I didn't know it. Someone came over to my house. Mm -hmm. I felt like an oppression in my home. Mm -hmm. And someone came and prayed and they told me, you have to get rid of this. And it wasn't even intention. It was just something that I bought, yes, right? So that can be the case. The person probably doesn't even know. No, Right. Many, right. Time, many times we don't know. When it comes to CD, record books, and all that, we don't know. We don't think about it. You don't pray over anything. You just, you see something, and the man says, hey, that's beautiful. And you say, you know, that will go great in my living room. But what are you bringing in? It could be an idol. It could be an object. We don't believe that things like that are cursed. We don't want to think things are cursed. You know why? Because, truth be told, you like it. So it matches your house, so it matches your furniture, and you're like, you know, that's a great art piece. I went to my sister's house one day when she came back from Mexico, I think it was Mexico. And my wife and I are sitting there, we're talking, and she's like, look at this piece, how beautiful. She has it hanging up, and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and the spirit of God just is bouncing all over me. It's like, and my wife, and I'm, I look at it, I'm like, you gotta get rid of that. What? You know how much money I pay? And we're like, you gotta get rid of it. It was flames coming up and but I'm like, look within the flames. It looked like people were in there. And we hang this up, not knowing where did it come from? Oh, it came from some what does he do? We have no idea because you're expecting a point a guy in a pointy hat, a lady in a pointy hat with a, with an apple with a big nose going, here. Then you'd be like, no. <laughs> Cause that's what you're expecting. But if I come up to you and I say, here, I bought this for you, you won't even think twice. You'd be like, thanks. Not knowing the intentions that that person has or who he's serving. <laughs> Again, now say not everything, please. Say not everything. I want you guys to say it. Not everything. Not everything. <laughs> please, because we could get so crazy, you'd be like, I, in the whole house. You'd be living in, in an empty room. <laughs> Because the devil will, 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 will raise it to such a point, you'd be like, that's the devil. That's just my recliner. <laughs> Not everything. But there are certain things that God, the Holy Spirit, would tell you. Why? Because you start practicing it. If you're watching something, you're practicing. You are indulging in it. You like it. Whatever you watch, you like. Right? Whether it's Game of Thrones, whether it's The Walking Dead, whether it's, uh, I don't know, uh, True Blood, Buffy the Man, I don't know, whatever it is you're watching, that's what happened. That's what you like. That's what you're practicing. That's what you're inviting. Yes? Sorry. I have a friend who's blind. She, and she, um, and she told her friend that she was going to have fish fingers for lunch. Got back, got back home, decided, found out, found out from her mum that the fish fingers were well, she still had the fish fingers because otherwise she'd be lying to her friends. Now, I think, personally, I think that she was taking a big risk. And, yeah, but, she was okay, but I don't, how far she was 
should we go? Which fish fingers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know, how far should we go with not lying? That's what I'm asking you. Don't lie at all. Don't lie at all. No, but she didn't she didn't you know, she didn't know it was a lie. Well, uh, all right, we we could talk about that. Uh, 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 <coughs> yes. Sorry. No, I mean, if I say I'm going to your house and I, don't, I can't make it to your house because something comes up, just because I told you I'm going to your house doesn't mean I'm a liar. I don't go. But it's about being responsible and accountable and being a woman of your word or a man of your word. I'm calling you and saying I can't make it. I'm sorry. Yes. Right. And that's that's what. Right. That's what, yeah, that's what your friend should have done. That's yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, the Bible says that your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen? Amen? But we are commanded to have nothing to do with these kinds of things in Scripture. Amen? Amen. Remember, demons can dwell in objects. Not just they prefer human bodies, but they'll go into an object, whether you believe it or not, whether it's a crystal, crystal ballroom, you know, dragon. How many of you people love figurines? I know people that love figurines of dragons and medieval things and this, that, the other. They, they decorate their houses with everything. Fairies. Little baby angels. Have you ever did that? Mm -hmm. Bible says no carbon image. Right. Nothing. <coughs> and we should always ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. Amen? Amen. Man, we haven't even got started. Man. Jesus. Deuteronomy 7, 25, 26. You mean images of their gods shall eat burn with fire. You want to know what to do with these things? Burn it with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Why is he telling you that? Why is he telling you that? Telling you that not to idol and not to worship no idol but me. Mm -hmm. Why is he telling you? Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Well, you shouldn't care, like, even if it's, like, really valuable, just throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. You know, there's some people that would not get rid of certain chains and necklaces, even if it has the face of Jesus. It ain't Jesus. It's a carbon image. Why would I ever have a cross with Jesus? Is he on the cross? Mm -mm. No. Do you need to see him to save you? Mm. Throw it out. Are you out of your mind? You know how that was passed down from generation to generation? You know how much that is worth? Well, how much is your soul worth? Let's put a price on it. You become a person who practices, who worships a common image. No common image should be in your house. Not a little baby Hisu. Not the major in Christmas. But it looks so cute. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. That's what the scripture says. And if you are a father of Jesus Christ, then you are obligated to abide by the scriptures. And the problem why many people don't talk about this in the church is because they don't want to ruffle any feathers. But those that don't speak about it have to be accountable to God. I might give account for a lot of things, but not for not preaching His word. Amen. If He says don't do it, don't do it. The Lord does not like it. Again, He tells you, do not bring in because you will be cursed. Now, you could be saved, brother, like He said. You could be, but, but if you willingly disobey God, then by His word, you are cursed. Why? Because he says he doesn't go higher than, he word, than his word. And he says that you bring it in, guess what? If you brought it in, you're cursed. And whatever comes with that, comes on you. Then you can go to him and say, Lord, help me from this. Why? You did it. Some of us are very wicked. But no one's going to tell you that because they don't want to offend you. They want you just to like them. I don't care if you like me. <laughs> I'm not here for you to like me. 
If that was the case, I'm in the wrong business. I shouldn't be up here. But I am accountable as the shepherd for your soul. And I want your soul to make it. So when the Lord says this, you have to be held accountable. Right now, you should be thinking of things in your house that you have let in, that you have in. You know, when the Lord calls me to clean my house, I went. I went through every DVD and all that. This is that there. And I threw out tons of things. And you know what he told me today? There's still things. Because as you grow on me, I'm going to show you more things. Oh, Lord. I said, I have no DVD collection. <laughs> we laugh, but... <laughs> What's in your house? What demon is lurking in your house? By saying that, I remember this. Last night I had a dream that there is a certain thing in my house I have. I didn't even know I have it. But it revealed to me. Mm -hmm. And I look, and there it is. But you know, it, 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 it's, 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 so, it's so blessed that God can be in you and can tell you things that even when you're sleeping. Amen. So that's why I say when I was sleeping. <laughs> God is still with you. So now I remember these things that, as you say, I just want to. Amen. It says, many Christians have brought idols and other works of evil <laughs> into their home without realizing the harm or curse that also comes with them. Idols are statues that others use for worship are especially forbidden in Scripture. Statues of Buddha. You ever seen people with statues of Buddha? One of the most common idols in many homes. Well, it's for good luck. Listen. If you want to rob a fat man's belly for good luck, knock yourself out. But that's an idol. You see all over places in Chinese shops and all over, and people, God forbid you touch it, but that's an idol. They have deceived people by persuading them that these, they're not bad. With a mask, baskets, painting, art objects can also have demonic curses on them. SRG should be burned or destroyed for the open lives up to satanic bondage and attacks. Now, I'm not saying all eyes. Please understand me well. Like I said before, not everything. We need to use wisdom and discernment. It's one thing the Christian lacks. Wisdom and discernment. Lord, is this of you? It's just a basket. Lord, is this of you? But you're making me proud. It's not about being proud. It's about being free. It's about sleeping well. Amen. It's about your house being the house of the Lord. Whose house is it? Well, it's my house. I pay rent. No, it's his house. Amen. Whose room is it? It's my room. No, it's his room. And he'll decorate beautifully if you let him. Or you can push your mind and put what you want. And along with that, whatever else comes along with it. We will ask the Lord for wisdom in the sermon. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you want to clean your house of any evil object, as you begin looking for these objects, always be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. As you pray, the Lord will bring items to your mind. Like the brother said. He will bring items to your mind. You might just be feeling about something that isn't right. Okay, these are all my purchase overseas or other trips, especially foreign, you know, objects, things. We must be very careful. We must be very careful when we go to other countries because you have to understand that many countries worship idols. You ever been to Mexico? It's idols all over the place. You ever been to Greece? Greece is known for many idols. Asia. I, everywhere you go is idol. No Jesus. Paul even said it, right? There's an idol for this, there's an idol for that, and there's one with nothing in it. Idols all over the place. Is the bunny rabbit an idol on Easter? Is he an idol? Yes. How about Santa Claus? Yes. It's an idol. I mean, I can't get gifts. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> you want to give me a gift, I'll take it. But you don't have to wait for Christmas. I mean, that's all right, because some people, I'll make you cry, and you start crying. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Often, many Christians will not get rid of that object due to the cost, due to the emotional attachment. They reason. It costs a lot. Have you ever said that? It has a special significant value to me. They feel they cannot part with it. How many of you have things in your attic that you have not gotten rid of because someone gave it to you because it was your abuelas? Your grandma. Okay. I got my, my dad's queen collection. Your dad's what? I got my dad's queen collection. Coin collection. Oh, coin collection. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, what? what? <laughs> well, again, wisdom and discernment. Wisdom and discernment. Not everything. <laughs> but the enemy is tricky. So fine. So you clean your house. You get things, you get rid of things that God doesn't want you in your house. The enemy doesn't stop. He will still get you to practice things. What? Clean the house atmosphere. Right? We know that your home is your domain. It's where you live. It's where you raise your family. And we know that influence that are offensive on the street can be deadly in the home. One of the most main influence that creates the very atmosphere in your house comes directly from the airwaves. Now you say you don't practice nothing, right? You don't practice nothing that's demonic. You don't practice nothing that's unholy. If we were to take a survey, if I was to say, hey, hey, how many of you think Christian saw as you go to and for work? Some of you would say yeah. Some of you would say no. Why is it that everywhere you go there's music? Anyone tell me? Does anybody know? Why is this music in the elevator? It's an elevator. It's put you into it's the mood. The Put it puts you into different moves. Yeah, the enemy is tricky. Yeah. That's why the Bible said we wrestle against principality of the air, of the airwaves. He'll get you a practice certain thing because man, when the fresh likes something, it'll move to it. Yep. Waves change the way you think, the way you act, the way you move, the way you feel. Right? We play a good upbeat song in the church and you start you st <laughs> moving, right? But if I play a, uh, allegedly a holy song, you start crying and feeling the presence. That's not God. You know what that is? Your flesh. And the enemy knows that. So he'll work it into there to get you, get you to practice certain things. Right? Certain songs. Think about the songs you liked growing up. Don't think about the beat. Think about the words. And I guarantee you that most of you will be horrified. Most of you will be shocked of your artists because your artists will profess what they do. They'll tell you who they serve. The majority of artists will tell you, yeah, I serve the devil. They don't, they don't care. Why? Why do they care? You know why they don't care? Because you're still making them rich. You're still buying their, 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 their music. They don't care. They know it works. Yeah, I serve the devil. I even said it in the record. Go buy it. And we buy it and we sing it and we go like, yeah. So my soul to the devil. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> no? No young people? No? No? Just me. Okay, I guess it's just me. Wasn't it Bob Dylan who said uh, in the intro, they asked him, why are you doing this for so long? He said, well, you know, I made that pact and I'm living up to my end. To do what? To get to where I'm at. The interior said, who did you make the pathway? He said, well, with the commander in chief. The interior said, commander in chief in this row? And he laughed, he said, this one is the one you can't see. So when they tell you that they make a path with the devil, they really are. When they tell you that they only release certain music at a certain time, it because it goes according to their beliefs. It goes according to their worship. 
we're so naive that we're like, ah, no, that can't be true. When Miranda tells her that she hears voices, that she, that she has a monster beside her bed talking to her, she's not lying to you. When they say to these writers who write these songs, when they're telling you that it comes to them as they get into a trance and they write with their opposite hand, it's because they're being guided by spirits. And we just follow along and you bring it into your house. How many of you have old CDs in your house? How many of you have old tapes in your house? How many of you have you know, those big eight tracks still in your house? <laughs> right? Because it brings an emotion to you. It brings a feeling to you. This is what happens when you hear music. Okay? Brain waves will resonate with the beat of the music, causing your heartbeat and your breathing to match it. When you listen to music, you are using both sides of your brain. Amazing? Some of you think you don't No, when you listen to music, both sides of your brain get activated. Yeah. It has been shown in a study that athletes, when they're running, if they listen to a, a beat, they'll run for longer, faster, and harder. Because the beat, their breathing, and the heart rate will match it. Yeah. Come on, you ever ran and you, and you get that good song? Matter of fact, when you drive, you have been driving, you hear that good song, and you're like, oh, I'm burning the road now. It gravitates, it, it happens. Don't tell me you haven't done it, you all done it. Amen. And the devil knows this. So he'll, he'll come in with lyrics. You don't think he knows how to live it? The guy sings very well. He knows how, he's crafty, he's subtle. Listening to sound waves over 95 decimal can mentally reduce your mental and physical response by 20%. Club music is played at 120 decimals. If 95 decimals can mentally reduce your mental and physical response by 20%, what is 120 decimals doing to you? This is when you go to a club, you're just stupid. <laughs> You're dumbed down. You ever seen someone blasting music in the ears? The guy just looked like they did. <laughs> they going? I'm not practicing. No, you're just chanting everything the word says. Everything the music that you is chanting. So if they say they're worshiping the devil, they're worshiping the devil. If they say they're drinking and smoking, yeah, I'm doing it. If they're calling girls bees and this and that, oh yeah! And the enemy gets you to curse yourself. Because as long as all that's flowing out, you guess what's not flowing into you? Now you guys, you guys listen to holy songs all the time. It will activate both sides of your brain. Why? Because in your brain, you have hippocampus. I hope I said that right. Hippocampus is a small organ located within the brain uh, mental medial, medial polo temple. loop, temple loop, and it form in, in, and forms an important part of the limbic system. The region that regulates emotions. The hippocampus is associated with mainly with memory, in particular long-term memory. The organ also plays an important role in spiritual spatial, uh, spatial navigation. So in your brain, God designed you with this little hippocampus that the minute you hear music, it has to do with long, this is why when you listen to certain music, you can remember them even if you haven't heard them for years. You're talking about memory loss, right? So oh, I can't remember where I put my keys. But you remember some songs. You remember some, and you can say, no, 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 no. Well, let me listen to ACDC Thunderstruck. I'll lose it. I'll be, oh man. I go out and kill someone. Why? Because it affects, and the enemy knows this. You see, you don't, you, you, you don't have to be casting spells and all that. They'll do it for you, and you just memorize it. 
Think about songs that you love. How about love songs? Why is it telling you to do? Oh, I got my old song when I grew up. Listen to the words. It's telling you something. He's telling you something. These others are telling you something. These others are wicked. And you make them rich. And you pour your soul. But come to a church to sing a Christian song. It's like someone's peeling the very skin off you. Why? Because it's easy to serve the devil. You're rad right because you like it. Because your flesh is evil. So you like to groove to it. Don't let me play Marvin Gaye. Half of the older people will be like, baby time. Young, I don't know who's young no more, so I don't know, I don't know, you know, I don't listen to me, like, who, who's young people, who you like? <laughs> it was a trick question, it was a trick question, <laughs> you had to see their face, they were like. <laughs> Just it's your question, guys. <laughs> Music, especially the heavy metal bands like ACDC, all these guys. Let me tell you something. Even some, even some Christian rock music it is nothing but a satanic worship. They are nothing but priests guiding you, leading you into darkness. Because whatever you confess out of your mouth, your body will follow. Whatever you confess will come upon you. Do you understand that? Amen. You have to test music. Does it leave you the God? Or does it leave you away? Does the music you listen to, does, does, does it get, bring you closer to the presence of God? Or does it leave you away? Come on, young people. Because I know you have it on your phones. I know you listen to your sneak when you, uh, no, not mommy. Mommy, no, mommy, I don't, I know how when I leave here. Mommy, you know, I, you know that's not me. No, 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 I see you. <laughs> you sneak it. And you listen to it. Does it bring you closer to God? This is why you can't pray. This is why you, why should you pray when you got 20 devils telling you something? In your ear. Now you go to bed. Now you're trying to pray. So look at the way the eyes are stacked against you. You're listening to music that doesn't glorify God. And the devils are coming in, right? Because they're telling you all these things. They're telling you it's all about you. They're telling you to go drink, go smoke. Go have 20 girls, smack them all up. Right? Because that's the way. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Smack them up, flip them. Then you go home and you turn on the TV or your iPhones or whatever and you watch more evil stuff because it's not going for God. Game of Thrones is not going for God. Right? Spoiler, gods of sand, they're not, they're not going for God, right? The Walking Dead is not going for God. Then you go to sleep. Then you say your two little minute prayer. Or one. Now I let me down sleep, I pray the Lord my soul keep. If I have, <laughs> bam, done Lord. And you wonder why you feel things. And you wonder why you just chanted all day. You just chanted all day without even knowing it. Songs that doesn't glorify God. You're chanting it. You're singing it. You talk about casting spells. Listen to the words. My all-time favorite is Michael Jackson growing up, right? We are the world. We are the children. Everybody sang it. It's a unity song. It's supposed to unite everybody. You know, we are the world. We are the children. Blah, 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 you know. There's a choice we're making, right? We're saving our own lives. Are you saving your own life? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a verse that I saw. It said, as God turned stones into bread. And everybody sang it. Did God turn stones into bread? Nope, but it was in the song. Nope, but people sang it and blasphemed God. Look it up, I'm not lying. You can look these things up. Everything I'm telling you, you can look up. And now you go to sleep. 
Oh, you're not a practicing wizard or nothing. Hey, how many of you like scary movies and movies about death and movies about magic and movies about... Because it's all over the place. How many of you? Not me, Pastor. Not me, Pastor. But when there's no one around, <laughs> you're watching it. You watch a movie about little possessed dolls. <laughs> What's the name of it? Chucky. Huh? No, not Chucky. Annabelle? Annabelle? Yeah. Doll. Yeah. Doll. A doll. Annabelle. 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 Evil thing. And you people laugh. It's not real. Oh, it's real, right? <laughs> then you suffer with, with, with what they call sea prize, where you can't move. Have you ever thought that? You can't move at night? Have you ever thought something on top of you holding you? i tell you what it is. It's incubus and succubus. Those are spirits. Those are actually sexual spirits. They get released to a, with a lot of movies. And the enemy sets it up because every time someone's about to die in these scary movies, what is the first thing they do? They have sex. Pay attention to movies. Not that you should be watching it, but remember those of you that watch movies. Remember all the Jason movies. What did they do first? Have all the Freddy movies. What did they, what, what? they have sex. They have sex first, then they die. So subconsciously, so you're watching this, and the enemy, this is what you're practicing. And this is what he wants you to do. Because this is what life is about. Oh, I won't practice that. <laughs> yes, he did. Because you still do it when you go by a father. He's like, you know what would happen if we were in the park? You still hear the little voices. You still hear the ch ch every time you go to a forest. No? Alright, maybe it's just me. According to the American Academy of Children, the influence of music, right? A music video, the trouble lyrics of these type of types of teen music advocate and glamorize the abuse of drugs and alcohol, present suicide as a solution, display graphic violence, throw in the accord with Satan and human sacrifice, describe human sexual practice, incense, right? And just treat the woman bad. Science fiction movie that says Star Wars. No, Star Wars not bad. Bad Star Galactic, right? Television program promoting worldly and evil influence should be also avoided. David Moore, a writer for the Gallup organization, analyzed American interest in the accord. What does the Bible say? Evil communication corrupts good morals. Man, manners. First Corinthians 15:33. What do you do? What do I do? When 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 is when when there's when there's stuff playing, do you do you put do you have Christian songs in your brain? When there's when there's, when like there's stuff in the elevator, say. Actually, I I, I actually don't hear it. Okay. I actually black it out. I actually depend on the Holy Spirit so much. That, that I don't hear certain things because I got used to not hearing. When I'm home, I don't turn on the TV. I don't turn on the radio, why? Because I know my flesh and my flesh will fight me and it'll pull towards certain things. So I submit the flesh to the word of the Lord. I don't turn it on. When I'm going somewhere, and, and, and it happens many times, I could have the window down and I hear a song, automatically my flesh is like, yeah! And I got, I, whoop, I turn my music a little louder and I train myself. And it takes work. It takes total dependence on the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I don't want to offend God. Why? Because I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and whatever I carry with me, it will carry into my house. It will come in. You don't believe it, but it will come in. I watch while I watch. I'm careful with it. What I listen to, I'm careful with it. What I read, I'm careful with it. 
But how about Christian books? I don't read all Christian books. I know that's hard to believe, but let me tell you something. I'll give you a great example. I read a Christian book one time. I won't give you the name of it because it's evil. But it was in a Christian bookstore. I said, man, th 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 this sounds interesting because, you know, I, I, I like to read at times. I read it. I was reading it. And I remember one night I was reading it. And, and this book, have you ever read something and it just grabbed you? And it enticed you so much that it was hard for you to pull it down? And every time you had free time, you read it? I read this book more than I read the Bible. But in my mind, it was okay because it was a Christian book. And this brother was telling his testimony. And I remember one night I put the book down. My wife was next to me. I closed my eyes. And the instant I closed my eyes, I felt something come upon me, hold me down and tie my hands. And, and, and couldn't scream, couldn't in my mind, I screamed Jesus. My wife said, I murmured. And I was like, Did, no, I said, I screamed. And she was like, no, no, you, you look like you were just talking in sleep. I said, I just fell asleep. She said, yeah, you got knocked out like that. That how fast. And I asked her, Lord, why was that? What happened? I'm serving you. I'm following you. What happened? He said, that book. But it's a Christian book. He said, who said? But it's a Christian bookstore. He said, did I tell you to buy it? Did I tell you to read it? He said, what he did was, did you open the door? What he did by reading it, you actually allowed Satan to come right in. I said, what do I do with this book? He said, destroy it. And I learned a very valuable lesson from that day on. Why? That even though it might be in the Christian bookstore, I don't read everything. I ask the Holy Spirit. And lately, you know what the Holy Spirit told me to read? The Bible. Not no book on the arm of God. Not no book. The Bible. You know, the B L B I A. The Bible. La Bible. Why? Because I don't want to practice things that's not going to glorify God. I don't care how many times they put the word holy on it. You understand? Now let me tell you something about Hollywood because some of you love your movies. Now I like movies. You like movies? It's not a good question. You can answer yes. I like movies. But Hollywood is very satanic. The name itself tells you. What does the name Hollywood mean? Anyone knows? Yes. The true origin goes back to the Nordic times and pagan rituals. A druid were tree worshippers, especially the oak. The holly was their most sacred symbol because it was scared to Mother Holly or hell, the Norse goddess of the underworld, which doubt we have holly or Hollywood or Hollywood, a place of magic. The Hollywood was a favorite source of magic wands. That's what they did their magic wands for. So all those people that love Hollywood, all those people, and you see all over the place. You see all over Disney, magic wands. You see a Harry Potter, magic wands. Witches and water, magic wands. The Holly wand from the Holly tree. Hey, you know how slick the devil is that he gets here to curse you? Curse you? No? How many of you put that round thing around the door at Christmas? The reef? Yeah, what is that made of? It's made of holly. Deck the hall with Of holly, la 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 la. Yeah, you ain't practicing. You ain't bringing things into your house. No, you just, you just, you just opening the doors. Come right in. See what the Bible says here. Leviticus 14, 33, 57. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you enter the land of the Canaan, which I have given to you as your possession, and you put a severing, oh, a, 
and I put a spreading mower on the house in that land. The owner of the house must go and tell the priest, and I have seen something that looks like a defiling mold in my house. The priest is to order the house to be empty before he goes to examine the mold mm. so that nothing in the house will be pronounced unclean. After the priest, or after this, the priest is to go in and inspect the house. Now you read Leviticus, and you know Leviticus, you know that when the Israelites came into the land of Canaan, and they drove the Canaanites out, you know what the Canaanites would do? Anyone? Anyone? They would bury their idols in the house, in the floor, on the ground. And the Lord would let them know there's idols in your house by a mold appearing on the wall. And the priest would come in and clean it, and lock the door. And if he came back a couple of days later and it was still on, they would have to take the bricks out of the house and take it out of the city. Why? And dig up the ground until they found the idol. Why? Because that would be cursed. That place would be cursed. Do you know that about the Israelites? Do you know that about the Canaanites? What does that have to do with Hollywood? Well, how many of you have movies in your house? Do you bring in? Go to your TV. Go in that thing that has a lot of dust that hasn't been opened in years. Open it up. Go to all your movies and see if they go if I got And where you have them? Underneath something, hiding somewhere. Idols. From Hollywood. You're going to like this one. You ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments? Yes. It was the biggest set ever built for a Hollywood film in the 1920s. And it was buried in the sands of California coast. You ever seen that movie, The Ten Commandments, with Moses? You love it. Remember the temple of Ramsey, of Pharaoh? You know that the architect that did that so big and so perfect? Then when they just, what do, what do people do with sets when the movie's over? They dismantle it, right? They take it and they put it away, right? Why did they bury Pharaoh's idols? underneath Hollywood <laughs> to this day <coughs> to this day and everything that comes out of those Hollywood is cursed you think I'm making it up but they actually they actually dug these things up I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not shoveling you guys fairy tales I'm telling you what's underneath Hollywood and people walk in the stars of fame and this no 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 if you dig in there you'll find Ramsey, you find Phoenix and, and, and statues. You go to the desert and you find even more because the set was so huge that they did not want to start. So they buried it and they built the Chinese theater on top of it and they built things on top of it. So you're walking on top of idols. But isn't that really Egyptian? <laughs> come, next, come next Tuesday when we talk about symbols. Evil. Isn't it? Recent Gallup survey showed that just about three or four Americans hold some paranormal belief in at least one of the at least one of the following: extrasensory perception (ESP), haunted houses, ghosts, mental te uh, telepathy, clairvoyance. Astrology, communication with the dead, witches, necromancy, channeling, just seeing all these thematic influence movies and television shows, our modern age exposed to it is, is strong proof of these unhealthy fascinations. Some of the top rated television shows currently running include such titles as Teenage Wolf, that was one while ago, it was very famous, about a boy who transformed to a wolf. The Walking Dead, Supernatural, Mind Games, Pretty Little Liar, Vampire Diaries, Lost Girls, True Blood, very wicked show. Let me tell you something about True Blood, y'all watch that show. It's A, it was sex all over the place. Vampires, they didn't look like vampires, they were these sexy guys. 
They just love to have sex and grab ladies and fairies and werewolves. And this is what the generation loved. But you put something about Jesus, forget it, no, empty, empty. Wishes of East End. Not to mention the continuous rumors of Harry Potter the movies. You know I would see Christians walking around with Harry Potter books in the church. And the Bible said, do not bring any abomination to the house of the Lord. And you wonder why the Spirit of God doesn't move in churches. Oh, it's just reading, it's just, just to read and no. Do a little history check on the lady that wrote those books. Do a little history check on, on the spells that he cast. But you memorize that faster than you memorize the Ten Commandments. What are the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill. What's the rest? Mm. Point proven, right? Oh, yeah. The show today, what is it? Lucifer? Where the devil got so tired of being in hell that he's now just helping people. Amazing. It's a, it's amazing how he comes into your house and you watch it. Yes. If it grieves you to turn the TV off because you're going to miss your favorite show, then who has more power? The Holy Spirit that you claim that lives in you? Or the devil that lives in you? It is that simple, people. Ah, oh, Pastor, you just took away half the things I like. Good, I'm going to take the other half later. Don't worry, you'll be fine. But you would not be in bondage or in captivity. And my job is not to have you in captivity. Amen. So these things do affect. If you think survey, and again, this is not, I'm not giving you scripture. I'm giving you surveys. I'm giving you things that these people are studying. Saying that the minute you watch violence, you're more likely to do violence. When you play a video game, have you ever seen some video games that you gotta find out clues and everything? It's always something satanic. There's always some pentagram. There's always some witchcraft in it. But you're not practicing, you're just playing the game. No, you are practicing it. You just haven't drawn the pentagram in your house yet. But you have it right on your TV. Why is it okay to watch movie after movie of witches and they're doing pentagrams and spells and everything and it's okay? And you're like, well, I don't have it in my house. If you have it on your TV, that is the altar. That is the place of worship. And the Lord says, don't do it. You tell me to get rid of the TV? I'm not telling you to do anything. Let the Holy Spirit tell you. I'm responsible for what I watch. I'm responsible for what my kids watch. Just look at the statistics. I'm not, I, I'm not lying. Watching a single violent program can increase aggressiveness. Yeah. Trinity Who View shows in which violence is very realistic, freaking repeated or unpunished, more likely to imitate what they see. Children with emotional behavior learn, yes. <laughs> learning or input to control problems may be more easy influenced by the TV violence. Again, it could come now, it could come later on. And no, it doesn't have an effect on you. You're not practicing it. Let me tell you something about me. I love video games, right? Every video, you, um, now when I love video games, I don't mean that I love every video game. 
baseball games or, or sport games would bore me. Why? Because no one got hurt. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what the Lord freed me from. Every game, it, car games wasn't into because I could care less about racing. Every game I had, someone had to die. Someone had to get blown up. Someone got to get shot. Someone got, I had to kill someone. I had to solve mysteries. I had, Resident Evil was one of my favorite games. I asked my wife. I would sneak out of bed to play it. I would literally sneak out of bed and have the control in one hand. Oh, but that's not for... I played a game called Max Payne, right? It was a cop. He was solving a, a murder. But he was addicted to pain pills. And he would take pain pills to reduce the pain so he could shoot better. And every time he would take the pill, he would go into what they call, you know, the matrix real slow. And he would see the bullets flying all over him. But in that game, there was devil worshiping. In that game, there were so many things. I, I mean, I was chasing a guy one time in the game. I was chasing the evil guy, and I ran right to a pentagram. I was like, wait a minute, did I just see that? And it, it scared me. But you know what really scared me? The day I had an argument with my wife, and we were arguing, and I went to the kitchen, and the first thing that came to my mind was like, just shoot her. Kill her, kill her, kill her. First time I'm hearing this. <laughs> first time shooting? Those are the thoughts that, that would run through my mind. Why? Because every instant in me was killed. And the enemy would torment me. You don't, you don't, need, you don't need this. You don't need this. Kill it. Take the money. Get in the car and go. No one will find you. Oh, no, no, no. They don't have no influence on you. I put every game I had in the, in the thing got rid of it. But it was PlayStation. You know how much money? My wife would tell how much money was in that. Supplying so these devils. That's what you're doing. You're encouraging them to continue their witchcraft. You're encouraging them to continue their practice. It's for fun. It's for entertainment. Who's entertainment? What does the word entertain mean? To enter, entertain. So what's entering you, entertaining you? Is it violence? Is it witchcraft? Is it sorcery? Or is it the word of God? Do you know that the average Christian practice more evil than holiness? Because you just won't give things up. Because I know half of you right now, the devil is telling you, there's nothing wrong with your game. There's nothing wrong with your music. There's nothing wrong with your movie. Pastor is just making a beat, blowing things out of proportion. When was the last time God showed you happened? When was the last time you actually prayed for a miracle and it happened? When was the last time you testified someone got saved? When was the last time you went to sleep peacefully? When was the last time you walked into your house without turning on all the lights? I'm just saying, people, come on. We need to be smaller. I'm almost done. I was set no wickedness, no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. How many of you realize that whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you allow in, gravitates to your heart. It grabs it, it holds it. I'm almost done. But this is important. This is why church people suffer. This is why church churches don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in them. Because what we have is just a bunch of practicing occultists in the church. You can call yourself holy all you want. I keep saying it over and over. I don't care if you're holy here. You got to be holy out there in your house. With your phones.
Well, I'm not practicing. Careful what you practice. Careful what you watch. Careful what you listen to. Well, it's fun. Well, it's fun. I wish someone from the from the dead would just rise up right now and tell you how bad hell is. You flip out. In fact, if that was possible, I think they would get up and throw you down just so they could be saved and sit here. Because it's real. The enemy is not playing. He's he, it's not a game. I truly believe that Christians have not yet experienced the true freedom in Christ. The apostles did. Certain people did because the Bible told me that they. And again, this goes back into <laughs> additional abominations, you know, books, movies. See, and even give uh, Ephesians 4 27 said, you know, give place to the devil. It says that many that believe came and confessed, and so their deeds, many also which use cursed art, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them. And finally, 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. Do me a favor. When you go home, maybe not tonight because you're going to say you're tired. Pastor went on too long. But tomorrow, when there's no service, walk through your house. I challenge you. I challenge you to ask the Holy Spirit. And Austin said, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to get rid of? And be honest. And take a bag with you. And look at your distorted teddy bears. Look at your dolls. They give you the heebie-jeebies. No, not dolls. Oh, 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 man. You got a lot to learn. Look at that thing that you hold so precious. You're like, I can never get rid of it. Look at it. Look at it. I really want you to look at it and ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. I guarantee you some of you will fill at least two bags of just stuff. Dresses that you haven't wear that you used to wear when you were a hoochie mama. But now you're not. Now you're a Christian. But you still got to hang it up. What spirit is that bringing? Let me not get into that, but you know, records, movies, games. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about things that the normal person would say. There's nothing wrong with it, but God says there is. Amen. You want true power? Start cleaning your house. You want to feel the presence of God like never before? Not only clean your temple, like the brother said, that we're the house of God, we're the temple, but clean the house so you can dwell there. Because believe me, he ain't there. Because God it will not share his house with no one. God will not share his children with no one. So it makes you think, are you his child? Or are you just a counterfeiter? Then one day when the wood does come out from your eyes, Oh, and you able to see it might just be a little bit too late because you'll be in his presence and he'll be judging you don't wait till then do it now do you understand what I'm saying I'm not saying this to aggravate you I'm not saying you this to, to bother you listen there are plenty of churches that don't even talk about this they, they don't care about this because they don't care about you they could care less. As long as you keep coming Sunday and giving the time, they could care less. As long as you go and you do the activity and the hours there, they could care less about you. They could care less what happens in your house. You can have a whole altar full of Satan. They don't care. You know that you know who Anton LaVey is? Uh -huh. Anton LaVey is the priest uh, of the Church of Satan before he died. Okay, Anton LaVey, a devil worshiper. He, had, he formed the Church of Satan. First guy. Bam. You know that he 
a devil worshiper said, I don't even allow my kids to watch TV. Why? Because he said, this is the way we get you Christians. Because you allow us into your house. And we tear down the family. Because you don't know that some of your favorites are with devil worshipers. You don't know that, you know, let's go back. You didn't know that Lucy from I Love Lucy was a channeler. She used to consult the dead. So did Marilyn Monroe. So did, uh, who else did they compare me to one time? James Dean? James Dean said, I know more about, about the occult than anyone else. Sammy Davis Jr., another devil worshiper. Ronald Reagan's wife used to hold seance in the White House. So does Hillary Clinton when she was in the White House. We have a, we have a hard time getting you guys here on Thursdays. But you let these guys into your homes day after day, night after night. Dance for me, devils. Sing for me, devil. Entertain me. And these elite don't even let their children watch TV. But the Christian would be like, there you go. Now remember I said not everything. But if the devils are not letting the children watch TV, man, we gotta take it. <laughs> we gotta take a hit. That guy died a horrible death. But he was very much against TV. Because he knew. I challenge you. Do a little research. Don't take my word for it. Although I know. Maybe I know something. A, a little something. See, it's quiet now because your mind is racing. Why does a devil worship that doesn't let his children watch TV? Because it's a medium. When the devil has you carrying your TVs. Now I use my phone for certain things, but there's certain things that I just won't put on it. Take that or leave it, people. There's more witchcraft going on in the church than sometimes outside of the church. And I don't mean this to hurt you. I want you to be free. I don't want you to be in bondage over <coughs> things that you have control of. Don't you know that? Holy Spirit, help me. He's like, I gave you two hands, two legs. Pick it up and throw it out. I'm not going to do it for you. Walk to your house. See what God doesn't want and throw it out. Don't give it away. Don't sell and give us the money. No. God takes care of us. Break it. I'm going to be with Let's sell it. No, don't sell it. Because you're giving the curse to someone else. Break it. It's worth, I don't care how much it's worth. Break it. It's a collector's item. Break it. Mm, not me. Fine. Sleep with that devil. Have that door open. You mean I won't go to heaven? I don't know. I'm not God. But it might be a little rougher. I want to make sure that when I fight him, I'm well equipped, not handicapped. Do you understand that? That he'll use whatever to hinder you. And this is why you suffer so much. And this is why you don't sleep. And this is why things torment you. And this is why you have a hard life time coming here and praying. Hard enough time coming here and singing. You can't sing a 
gospel. And listen, I watch about the songs that I put here, that we allow to put here. Because not all Christian songs, not all churches, I fear him. Do you? I leave you with that. Do you fear the Lord? I leave you with that tonight. Next Tuesday, we're going to get into symbols and how you have them in your house and what do they mean. Because the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Symbols that you so quick to put on you, whether it's clothes, whether this, that. Don't listen to every little fashion thing that comes along. But we're going to get into it because there's a lot of things out there. People have had two tattoos them on their body. <laughs> Amen? Yes, Amber, you have another question, honey? Um, one, of my, one of my classmates, um, she always wears this bracelet. I asked her why. She said, oh, it's just something that I pass by. She, I said, why do you wear it all the time? She said, she said because somebody told me that if you take it off, it's a curse. I said, no, it's not. I tried to take it off, but she refused. Can't that Gotta keep praying for her, Amber. Let's not be naive, people, amen? I know for a fact that as I was speaking, and that's a lot of things, but I know for a fact as I was speaking, God brought to remembrance certain things, certain things in your house, certain music, certain things that you have to renounce and get rid of. What does it cause a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If you can answer that, give me the answer to that. Then maybe you should keep what you have. But if you can't, then I suggest you get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Father, we praise your holy name, Lord. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, just... We ask you this, just let your word come alive in us, Father God. When your word says that your word is a lamp unto our feet. Let your word, Father God, be so bright that everything that's in darkness has to flee, has to run, has to be exposed, Lord. Bring to remembrance things that you don't want in our house, in our mind, in our heart. Open our eyes to see, Father God, what truly is evil, Father God. Let us not bring anything, Father God, that is an abomination into our homes, Father God. Let us not practice anything that is unholy, Father God. Let us not be counted, Father God, among those that you're going to cast out for doing sorcery and witchcraft, Father God. But let us be holy, Father God. Let us be a holy priesthood, Father God, a holy generation towards you, Father God, that you might be well pleased with us, that you might smile upon us, Father God, that you might be well pleased with us, Lord God. That you might, Father God, be proud to call us sons and daughters. Let us not be deceived by the enemy. Let us not be deceived by our flesh or by our emotions. But let us, Father God, be held accountable by your word. For your word does not come back void. It does not hit the ground. Your word is truth. Your word is life. And we thank you for your word. And we thank you that you love us so much, Father God, that you expose the schemes of the enemy. That we, not, that we, Father God, might not be swallowed up by him. But we might fight the good fight. That we might be buking with authority and power and might. For your glory and your honor, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord bless you this day. Now you can all run. Scrap! It's not that bad. It's only nine. It's not even nine yet. You got like a minute to nine. <laughs> Two minutes.